Marie Walton Marm, thank you so much for coming to talk with us on Backstage with Block today. Pleasure, my pleasure to be here. As a third birthday present, your parents sent you to ballet lessons. And later, when realising this was going to be so much more than just a hobby for you, they actually relocated to Newcastle so you could study under Miss Tessa Maunder. Later in your training career, and after completing your Royal Academy of Dance advanced exams with honours and solo seal, you were then awarded a scholarship to go and study at the Rosella Hightower School in France. Our family wasn't that well off. It came back with an offer including board, so it's actually more reasonable for me to go to France because I'd won enough money in Little West Edfords for the airfare and here I had board and living in Calms was quite nice at uh, 17. And you found yourself at only 18 years of age with a contract with the La Belle Marseille. Oh, it was unbelievable and quite unique because I hadn't hit the audition circuit yet. That was about to happen. I didn't know that Roland Petit was uh, watching this day. He comes up and offers me a contract. So it wasn't an audition. It was just a rare, special moment. That's amazing and it, this, it just goes to show you were doing what you love and what you enjoy most with no pressure and that's when these that's magical right. moments happen. Marie, you're a Royal Academy of Dance vocational graded examiner. Can you explain the importance of teaching not only the RAD syllabus, but also any syllabus to young dancers? Oh, absolutely. Structure is wonderful, especially in those nurturing years. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have to be RAD. It can be any structured syllabus, good syllabus. But a syllabus is only as good as the teacher behind it. Absolutely. Um, the teacher that just teaches with the head in a book, saying the head must be here on this count, the children can't feel, it's just robotic teaching. So mm -hmm. it's the underlying, pulling apart, peeling it apart, developing it, and then putting it back together. together. Yeah, that really counts. You have guided so many dancers into professional careers, and you have currently have dancers dancing all around the world in different companies. What do you think it is about your teaching that's given these students the edge? Well, you know, there's not only me, there's a lot of wonderful good teachers out there. And I, mm. those that have the record of so many dancing over the world, I believe it's treating everyone individually, communication, honesty, and just taking the time to guide completely. Mm -hmm. Also knowing when to let go. Okay. Because, there, you know, mm -hmm. some teachers, if a child is you know, showing promise, they want to keep them home, to keep winning, to get mm. recognition. And sometimes you've just got to let go. And, and then, you know, the relationship with that person changes. They're, they, you know, you're friends with them for years. It's so beautiful. It's almost, to me, when I'm listening to you saying that, it's almost like a mother acknowledging that the child has now become an adult and has to fly the coop. That's right. And supporting that. And supporting it. You mentioned in the past that when you first opened your studios in Newcastle that your aim was to nurture students into professional careers. What does the word nurture mean to you? Well, it's the holistic whole person, you know. In the classroom, it's not about who's best. Mm -hmm. It's rotating those lines. And if you don't reach every child, you're not really nurturing. You don't give up on these, hmm. the little one up there, you know, you just bring them up a little bit more and a little bit more and believe in them. As a recognised and highly respected dance educator and dance teacher, what do you think it is about your teaching that's given you longevity in this industry? Ah, <laughs> passion. <laughs> you know, it doesn't feel like work. When I come into the studio or I'm buzzed, it's never felt like work, so I guess that passion is driving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, longevity, well, I guess my old body, um, <laughs> it certainly helps me doing my own program, the Progressing Ballet Technique for me. So Marie, can you tell us how you actually came up with the concept to start Progressing Ballet Technique? Oh, sure. Back when I was in Le Ballet de Marseille, we went on tour with the late, great Maya Plissetskaya. 
Mm -hmm. And she would come in of a morning and lay down and do a floor bar. Now, at that stage, I'd never seen that. So um, this day I asked her, could I join her? And she nurtured me on that tour, you know, mm -hmm. and she's the big star and I was so excited to lay down and learn what she was doing. And I noticed my class straight afterwards was so much better. I was in tune with my body. One day I was at Pilates working on the reformer, which, you know, I love Pilates, but not every child can afford to go and mm -hmm. have Pilates as a supplement for yeah. ballet. And there was a fit ball there. So I was feeling the activation. Then I moved myself onto the fit ball and I thought, well, they're cheap. The, the program itself takes the floor out of a lot of work. So it's uh, like a floor bar, but using fit balls. You know, if you say to the child, you know, open your sternum, pull down on your thoracic, you know, all these, you know, without the hands on, mm -hmm. it's hard. Mm. But you lay them down and it triggers that because of the movement of the ball. Because mm. the fit ball moves constantly, mm -hmm. it gives instant feedback to the child. So I advocate at my courses, start training non-weight bearing before you stand up and do it so they can feel the movement to produce it. And of course it can be used for rehabilitation as well because uh, it's non-weight bearing most of the exercises. Right. What's some of the equipment that the program may utilise? Right, well, we use the long block resistance bands, <laughs> <laughs> um, which I love. Um, obviously the fit balls. How important do you think it is for young students to be given the correct tools when um, learning um, and even being given the right shoes and using the right uniform and the right equipment? Oh. How do you think that that actually helps with their development and their progress? Well, it's absolutely essential. You know, mm. I believe in uniform structure, the hair back, the correct shoes, not buying the shoes for the child to grow into, mm. you know, which is a common thing, the right mm. fitted point shoe, you know, the shoe's too big, it allows the child to roll and pronate, yes. which causes a lot of, um, you know, a lot of problems. The mm -hmm. pronation from a jump causes many stress fractures and impacts on the knee. So it's paramount that everything is handled, you know, correctly for safe dance principles. Safe dance technique has been gaining so much momentum in the industry, especially of late. Oh, absolutely. And safe dance is paramount. So at all my teachers' courses and those that are learning online, um, I stress, don't rush the training. Mm -hmm. Pull it apart. Mm -hmm. If the alignment's not there, go for quality over quantity. Don't put the leg too high too early. Mm -hmm. You know, if they haven't got the stability of their core and they're just about flexibility, they'll never hold the leg up anyway, you know? And it's about that gradual process. You know, there's no fast track. Mm. You know, it's just one step at a time. Very feel very responsible now that mm. there's teachers all over the world it's in 40 countries and you know there's teachers I can't get to and um, it's wonderful so I want them to have all that information of safe dance training. So you mentioned progressing ballet technique is actually being utilized in 40 countries how does that feel for you and did that come as a surprise to oh. learn that there's teachers all around the world utilizing your program? Look most of the response uh, from all around the world, the common thing is from teachers is, I wished this was around when I was training. Mm. I may not have had this wrong or that wrong and, uh, you know, hurt themselves in some way because it does look after the, the body. Mm. Doing things the right way and right. Uh, preventing injuries yes. from happening by engaging the right muscles. That's right. Maria, we can't thank you enough for talking to us today and sharing your experiences, your insights, and most importantly, your advice for dancers. Progressing Ballet Technique is a fantastic program. It really has helped dancers and it's so inspiring to students and teachers alike. Thank you. Thank you, I'm delighted to be here. <laughs>